Hello everyone, thank you once again for joining us right here on the Global Underwater Explorers YouTube channel. My name is Nico Luro, I film stuff, I talk stuff, I do stuff for GUE. And I'm joined to my left, grab your prop, do it now. I'm joined to my left by the rock star, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Michael Menduna. <laughs> <laughs> hey Nico, I got my base with me this morning. Yeah. The rock star has I... become equipped. He has his tools. <laughs> How are you doing today? I am good, my man. I am good. You got some dive stories for me, yes? I do. We have some great dive stories for you. And I'm going to start off, as we often do, with some questions for you, okay? Oh, good. So who made the first tech mix gas and a bonus bonus question is when and where michael menduno in 1969 <laughs> <laughs> not, not even close question number two this is the geek the geek geek bonus points how deep did they go 300 what? meters not that deep actually actually that's what we're pushing that today interesting too i wanted to ask a famous deep diver who got badly bent on mix and this dissuaded people from using mix for quite a way you know that name okay. love to make a fool of me once in a <laughs> we're going to come back and revisit this at the end it should be really good i think people will find it really interesting stay tuned to the end of the video to answer all these questions and to revel in Michael Menduno making me look a fool as he does every month. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You'll, you'll, you, uh, almost no one could answer these until now, but now we'll get to it. So we have some really killer stuff uh, this month. We are featuring, uh, just as last month, we, we you know, we've been on this rebreather track because this is, rebreathers are hot right now, partly yeah. because helium prices are going through the roof. So this month we are focusing on the Fathom mechanical CCR, only the Fathom knows. And we have a couple of pieces, um, one by John Kieran, uh, a GUE instructor who dives a lot of rebreathers and he's sold on the Fathom. And then we have a piece by the, actually the founder and uh, developer, Charlie Robeson, who's also a, a deep cave diver uh, and talks about the innovation in the Fathom. The real key is it's a, it's a mechanical rebreather. Uh, but it has a special valve called a needle valve, and that makes all the difference in the world, it turns out. Uh, divers able to adjust their oxygen flow to match their metabolic needs at depth. So you can mm. just dial it in and be good to go. So next, we have a great uh, story. You might remember the How Deep Is Your Library story. I do. I know, very well read uh, the mm -hmm. books that every techie should have on their bookshelf. Well, this time, uh, Christina Tembury, who's a risk mitigation uh, coordinator at Dan and a cave diver, has come out with a great piece called Podcasts, Webbies, and YouTubes. Oh, my. Basically, in-depth, definitive guide to uh, diving non-print media. We go through about 45 different podcasts, webinar series, uh, YouTube channels, all about diving. Um, and we not only cover tech diving, but we've extended it to scientific diving, military diving, and commercial diving. So we're trying to get the definitive list and links of all this media out there for our readers. It's, it's a really good piece. Media, lots and lots and lots of media. Who knew? I mean, I've seen, you know, the, the five best podcasts in diving. Yeah, yeah. I think Deeper, Deeper Blue out of the top five or top 10, but who knew there were more than 40? Yeah. <laughs> and from there, we uh, go underground. We actually have three cave diving pieces. The first one's kind of fun. We call it Doppler Doodles. And this is the uh, inimitable Mr. Steve Lewis, dive educator Steve Lewis, who's the marketing director for Ray. And he's also a cartoonist. So this is his nice. line marker cartoon tunes, which were premiered at uh, cave camp over the last few seasons. We have a Mexico story. You know, Mexico, people have been exploring Mexico, the new frontier for 30 years. Mm. You'd think by now, you know, people, explorers would be coming up empty. Like, you know, we've, 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 we've searched everywhere for new passageways. Well, not the case. We have a team of Bajarn, Imoka, and Laszlo, Team Bell, um, and they, in the last year, have discovered and surveyed 12.7 kilometers of new line in um, two caves, Yaks Chen and Kokaha. Not that kind of Koka, the other kind of Koka. <laughs> Kokaha. <laughs> Amazing, like 12.7 kilometers. Some of it back mount, some of it side mount, really gnarly little passageways. But it's really a really cool story on how to go where no one has gone before. They're using right. the Nemo and Ariane's line to do digital surveying, etc. And we have paired that up with some dives from our friends over in Sardinia, the Free Attic Foundation. And this is a project to uh, map uh, Grotto del Fico 
you know, it's a marine cave uh, on the island of Sardinia. They have a very active project going out there. So very fun. And finally, not, not back to our question finally, but the near finally, yes. we go and explore uh, an organization called the Academy of Underwater, the International Academy of Underwater Sciences and Techniques. These are the people who produce the Golden Trident Award. The, uh, the Golden Trident, of course, is the coveted weapon of the Fisher King in the King Arthur legend. And so um, it's an amazing organization. It's been around 60 years. The first awardee of this was Jacques Cousteau. There's people like Hans Keller, Buhlmann, uh, Walt Disney. <laughs> you know, the list goes on. It's divided into science, medicine, education, sports. Um, GUE founder Jared Jablonski won a Golden Trident in 2015. Chairman we've teamed Slug. up. We've teamed up with our friend uh, Andrea Murdoch Alpini uh -huh. uh, from Italy, and uh, he's written this great history piece of the organization and you know some of the heroes uh, of it. And then uh, I did an interview with the president, new president Paolo Ferrara, Ferraro, and uh, talking about the organization and where they're headed, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's it's a really interesting piece. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Now let's bring it back to the questions. Educate. Ah, yes. So, you know, the, the mixed dive, you know, technical diving revolution, the mixed revolution yes. really sort of got coined and started right in the early nineties. I actually trace it back to, um, to me, the Wakulla Springs project, Bill Stone's mm -hmm. Wakulla Springs project in 1987, sort of the moon shop that launched technical diving. They had air products as a sponsor. So they had lots of gas. Stone built his first redundant rebreather and stayed underwater 24 hours, etc. And also that. made the word air completely X rated and non usable. <laughs> That's right. It's not air, it's no gas. Of air, right? But that was just capstone on a whole series of dives. The first, back to our question, what, who made the first tech dive? It was really a Again, the cave divers are really the original. That's where tech diving came from, the cave yeah. community largely. And uh, Ian Rob uh, Robertson and Roly Nyman from the Rhodesia, uh, then Rhodesia uh, Sinawa BSAC Club, the British Sub Aqua Club. They were the first ones to do a mixed dive. They used Trimix, a, tr a 1636 mix, 16% 16 oxygen. And they dived, eventually dived to 100 meters uh, in this cave, Silent Pool, in uh, Sanoa Cave in, in Rhodesia, which is now uh, Zimbabwe. So, um, yeah, uh, ran their PO2 a little high. So this was a dive on Trimix 16. They were diving to 100 meters, eventually a series of dives, running their PO2 a little hot, like 1.7, 1.8. They were saying at the time this seemed like a reasonable compromise <laughs> between no. compression and safety. Who knew? From yeah. there... Um, 1970 and this was in 1960 what did i say 1969 67 i'm sorry it goes way back a few years later 1974 hal watts did a body recovery at mystery sink my, my glasses just came apart <laughs> nico look at this dude <laughs> i have an extra i have a i carry an extra set <laughs> Amazing. Hal Watts on a body recovery to 100 meters, 108 meters, 355 feet, got badly. He did it on Heliox, recovered the body, and got super badly bent. Very bad, badly bent. This pushed Hal, interestingly, to stay with deep air diving. And uh, for history buffs will remember that uh, Hal was teaching deep air even into the tech era when we had mixed gas. Um, right. And then it kind of went from there. Court Smith and Lewis uh, Holst. Uh, Holzendorf um, tried some mix at Wakulla. They ended up uh, doing the dive and both uh, convulsing on their oxygen stop at six meters. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, Lewis passed out, basically went unconscious. Uh, Court uh, may managed to get to the surface and drag his friend out. So, it, and, and there were a few others, Frank Fogarty, Roger Miller, some dives. So, ah, at the time, Michael. With stories yeah. like these, one wonders why more people don't do technical diving. I mean, <laughs> right? People were trying to figure it out, but the, the word on mix was stay away from it. Deep air is better. Mm -hmm. Until 1980, uh, Dale Sweet did a famous dive to what's called the flag room at Dipolder 2, 110 meters of 360, 360 feet. Uh, and that was the first successful mix dive in the US. Interestingly, uh, Sheck Exley, the week after Dale did this dive, 
went down. He called it the salute, the flag dive. Sheckley actually died on dived on air, the 360 to this room and saluted the flag. Uh, obviously, very narks at that point, you know. But and on it went. So this story sort of unwraps the story. There's probably about a dozen and a half individuals. The WKPP were part of this group: uh, Bill Maine, Parker Turner, uh, Lamar English, and uh, Bill Maine who founded uh, the WKPP Woodville Cars Production Planes. Uh, they're involved in this, Hasselmeyer, Sheck Exley, Bill Stone. So it's a great piece by uh, Chris Warner, who's a board member at the WKPP and uh, a doctor, and did a great job researching this. This is part of the um, research he did for their film coming out, documentary, the end of, to the end of the line, uh, on the exploration in the Wakulla Basin. So. Uh, it's a blockbuster is, issue. Issue. I think. I think people are really going to enjoy it. So You've named like yeah. a murderer's row of famous tech divers <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah. So uh, really, really interesting. And we got a bunch of historical photos from the day out of the archives and all that. So uh, I think cool. people are really going to like the issue. It'll be out Thursday, this Thursday, September first, mm -hmm. and you can find it at indepth.blog or GUE.com forward slash blog. So uh, man, he's like a seasoned professional at this point. <laughs> We've been doing it for a while, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, anyway. guys. So if you like this type of content, it is available every single month right here on the Global Under Auto Explorers YouTube channel. Michael Mendoza and myself do the recording to tease you into what's coming. The issue is out at indepth.blog and GUE.com forward slash blog. All those links are down in the description below. And that is pretty much it. Please do remember to like the video, share the video, tickle the notification bell, and we will see you guys next month right here yes. on Global Underwater Explorers. See you soon.